So quite a while ago, I got the opportunity to try the Tesla suit at a uh, meetup in Hamburg, Germany. And I can tell you, it was truly amazing. Today, I'm going to share my story with you of what happened that day. And uh, yeah, I hope you are going to uh, enjoy it. This uh, meetup was uh, organized by the VR AR Association. It's a uh, global member community that connects uh, businesses with brands and customers. They are pretty much trying to bring the VR and AR community closer together by, you know, doing these meetups. It's, it's very cool. And if you want to be a member too, then you can. I will make sure there is a link in the description below. But let's go back to the adventure itself. So yeah, I booked a session with the Tesla suit folks that for this occasion traveled all the way from Belarus to Germany to give a couple of private demos. And I was very eager to try it since I heard many good stories about their haptic clothing. Many people refer to it as the first Ready Player One suit and when I heard that I got even more enthusiastic. I'm sure you all remember the X1 haptic boot suit, right, that Wade Watts is wearing in the movie. It gives him the ability to feel the interaction he has with other avatars in the Oasis and also lets him experience the impact of getting hit. Honestly, you would think that a haptic suit like this wouldn't exist right now. RPO is set in the year 2045, so we have a long way to go. But turns out, we have already arrived in this era. The Tesla suit is very similar to the boot suit because it lets you experience heat and cold but also lets you feel something like getting hit or getting touched by a person. It's funny that when I mentioned all of this to the team they were well aware of the fact that all the hype surrounding their product had everything to do with Ready Player One. Yeah, it's kind of similar to X1 suit and if you, if you notice the, uh, the moment where a while the Parseval opening the box with X1 suit mm -hmm. was uh, like a very similar render that associated with our old renders of mm -hmm. our okay. like uh, oldest prototypes of the suit. Oldest prototypes? Yes, it okay. was not most oldest, like a, it's kind of Photoshop version of the yeah. old. So you're basically having a more futuristic suit than the one from the movie. Basically, yeah. So yeah, there you go. That's the answer we were all waiting for. But anyways, we're traveling a little bit too fast through time because before I could hop into VR, I first had to get into one of the suits. I had to email them up front what my size was, so they were well prepared on location. The Tesla suit comes in many sizes from an extra small to an extra extra large. So for everyone out there, there is a suit available. Sadly, I only got to wear the vest. They do have trousers too. You can combine them uh, pretty much with the vest itself and uh, go for a more immersive experience. So hopefully later down the road, I will be able to try that too. The overall comfort level of the vest alone was great, by the way. My first impressions were that the suit was stretchy enough, durable and was properly breathing too. Although I do have to say that it was a little bit on the heavy side. That does make sense since the suit is jam-packed with 60 electro sensors, plus it's completely wireless. The team told me the battery gives uh, juice for around 10 hours and communicates through Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. Before we could get started, they first had to do a test to find out how my body would respond to their TENS system. This stands for Transcutaneous Electrical Nerve Stimulation. In other words, it gives fast feedback to your muscles by using electroshocks. The suit can accurately simulate this through the 60 haptic channels it has. While they were doing all of this, they could go as far as taking control over my muscles by using software. Crazy. <laughs> okay. And then, um, what's about? That was alien, trust me. But there was even more that they wanted to show me because they were also able to pull in data with the biometry trackers that are built inside the vest. 
With this system, they can monitor your emotional state and stress levels, but also scan your vitals with live health data, such as your heart rate. After this quick setup, I finally got to go into virtual reality. And they had a serious game ready and where I had to escape a building that was on fire and about to collapse. At first I was a bit excited and scared too, I mean, this was, uh, this was just right after the moment they uh, showed me that they can control my muscles with software. So I was like, I don't know what to expect anymore, but the adrenaline was pumping for sure. I can't share any gameplay footage here since I wasn't able to record the laptop its screen. So instead I will just describe what the experience was like. So here we go. First of all, I got thrown into a hallway that was completely filled with smoke. I can tell you that I could barely see anything. And that's where the Tesla suit came in action. Because while I was standing there, people started running around in an attempt to find the exit. I could feel them, yes I could feel them rushing right past me. And I could even sense the speed they were moving in and even how close they were to my physical body. That was completely blowing my mind, but I had no time to waste. I had to find a way to escape before it was too late. So navigating with a vision of zero, I was able to make my way to a door. The moment I grabbed the steel knob of this door, I could feel that something was wrong since it gave me a light shock. My first response was, nope, I'm not going in there, it's, it's just too dangerous. But the Tesla team told me that there was a switch inside that would turn on the power and also the sprinkler system. So I had no other choice than to just enter this room that was already swimming in a sea of flames. The suit I was wearing here did not use thermal feedback, so I didn't feel a sensation of heat. But with the newer versions, you would be able to sense exactly how close you are to the flames, how hot they are and where it's safe to go. Throughout the entire demo, the TENS system was active. Sometimes I could feel it lightly and sometimes it got more intense, but this all depended on what was happening in game. But I can confirm that it was physics based. It's so strange that you can feel every interaction you are having from, you know, grabbing the power switch to pressing a bunch of buttons. It's impressive that it can let you experience all of this without a pair of pants or gloves. Although being able to gear yourself up with the complete package wouldn't be a bad thing. So yeah, I turned on the sprinkler system and uh, then I started to feel the water hitting me. At that moment, I really thought I was getting wet. I'm not joking. Little drips, big ones, I could identify them all. And with the thermal feedback system, you would even be able to feel the transition of going from hot to cold or even a mix of the two. Finally, the smoke disappeared and I was able to walk through the hallway without having to use the walls for guidance. The last challenge I had to face was crouching under a part of the ceiling that was still on fire. While I ducked under it, I could sense that it was about to collapse and the flames that were coming off this ceiling slowly came more and more to life. Again, super realistic and accurate. It really made me hurry up in a way where I thought there was danger coming closer and closer. The moment I took off that headset, I realized that haptic suits are going to be the future and that Ready Player One is slowly becoming a reality. This was definitely one of the most awesome things I tried so far. I just love how physical your adventures in VR can become with a haptic suit like that. After the VR AR meetup was over, I uh, got told that the Tesla suit can also be used for motion tracking and that if you want to, you can wash it by simply pulling out the power bank. And that's where I'm going to end today's video. I'm sure a lot of you now wanna buy a suit like that and you are wondering how much it is. Well, if you want to know its price, you gotta go to the Tesla suit website and ask for a quote. But you can only do that when you are running a business. At this very moment, this haptic suit is for uh, enterprises only. It's uh, mainly getting used in the healthcare and military sector. It's for training purposes. Don't worry though, there is still hope because haptic suits like the one I tried are going to come to the consumer market. They will make their way 
to the gamers out there. But for now, it's too early. It's not the right time just yet. So let's say you are interested in this, uh, in this Tesla suit, uh, make sure to you know, uh, check out the website. There is a bunch of information on there and you can also find locations where the Tesla suit is getting demoed because the team is traveling around the world to preach the potential of haptic suits. And that's where I'm going to end today's video. I wanna thank you all for watching and now it's time for me to sign off. And as I always say, and I see you guys uh, next time. See you in the metaphors. Imagine that in the near future, you can go to a virtual store and buy a haptic suit there and moments later it arrives on your doorstep in real life. Stay tuned.